Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. 2024 is the year of elections with Bangladesh being the first off the block. Incumbent Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina looking at a fourth consecutive term. However, with the principal opposition party, Khalida Zia's Bangladesh Nationalist Party, boycotting the elections, it can be safely concluded that the victory of the Awami League is a foregone conclusion. While on the one hand, Sheikh Hasina can be credited for the reported turnaround of the Bangladeshi economy, human rights watchdogs have time and again raised the red flag over the crackdown on civil society and political opponents in the country. The Bangladesh Nationalist Party, which is the main opposition, has boycotted the election and called on Hasina to step down. The boycott is a reaction to Hasina's rejection of allowing a caretaker government to conduct the election. The Awami League-led coalition had won 90% of the parliament seats in the last election. Most of BNP's top leadership is either in jail or in exile, including the leader, Tariq Rahman, the son of former Prime Minister Khalid Azia. Khalid Azia, the matriarch of the BNP, has been living effectively under house arrest. Zia is suffering from liver cirrhosis and the Bangladesh government has denied her permission to go abroad for treatment. Joining us now to take this forward is Veena Sikri, former Indian ambassador to Bangladesh and Badiul Alam Majumdar, secretary of the Citizens for Good Governance in uh, Bangladesh. Joining us from Dhaka. Uh, Mr. Badiul Alam, if I can begin with you, it seems that Bangladesh is moving towards a one-party rule. What are the major risks to the Bangladeshi people at this stage, the U.S.? Many other countries have raised concerns about uh, how these elections have had irregularities over the years and there are massive uh, human rights abuses in the country as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, through elections, people's consents are deflected. Uh, government is formed with the consent of the people. And whether or not that will happen, that's a big question. And also, our economy is in uh, real trouble. And uh, through one-sided election, and uh, an election which is not competitive, it will only accentuate the problem, the problem of economic uh, uh, challenges. And uh, also, uh, the, in the last two elections, last two elections were uh, controversial, to say the least. And another controversial elections where uh, people should be denied of their voting rights uh, will uh, accentuate mm -hmm. the, uh, the legitimacy crisis that the government has. And uh, then uh, it will have hmm. serious complications, and it will uh, compromise our. It could compromise our uh, sovereignty even. And so, uh, overall, we are heading toward uh, an uncertain future. Uh, elections are supposed to solve problems, and it will only uh, create more problems. And uh, heading toward, uh, we'll head, head toward an uncertain future. Right. So, Bangladesh heading towards an uncertain future. Uh, Ambassador Veena Sikri, how do you think a fourth term for Sheikh Hasina will augur for the India-Bangladesh relationship? Well, I, um, I, I think the India-Bangladesh relations um, are very good. I think it's a, a very strong outcome of India's neighborhood first por uh, foreign policy and uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's uh, uh, foreign policy with friendship towards all and malice towards none. So I think the bilateral relation is very good. I'd like to say that, uh, you know, we see the elections in Bangladesh as an internal affair of Bangladesh. So I would like to say right from the beginning that we are watching, of course, very carefully, but we we do note that it is unfortunate that the BNP had decided not to participate. But I think the BNP participating or not participating because of the caretaker government, that is not a really a fair question because the caretaker government had been knocked off by the Bangladesh Supreme Court many years ago. They had said that this, uh, the in a parliamentary democracy, you cannot have a caretaker government because that involves a non-elected prime minister. So I think that it is their own decision uh, to not participate, and one cannot comment on any decision taken by an individual party. It's entirely within their rights. Um, uh, but I think that uh, participatory election would have been better. But if not, the elections have to be held under the Constitution. And so you cannot delay it beyond a certain time. Otherwise, uh, you get into a state where, like, mm. uh, you know, 2000 to 6, 2008, you had an army back caretaker government for two years. So I think that all in all, these elections mm. have to go ahead. The jamaat e islami has been debarred from the mm. elections uh, because of the Supreme Court decision uh, regarding the constitution of the party vis-a-vis uh, -vis the constitution of right. the 
country of Bangladesh. So I think that uh, it's a very difficult okay. time. Um, uh, you know, I think that everybody is worried because you want elections to be participatory. You want elections to have a good voter turnout. So I think we have to see on Sunday how it turns out. It's unfortunate that the BNP mm. has announced a right. hartal um, asking people not to vote. Now that again in a national election okay. uh, encouraging a voter boycott, uh, which which will mean a, right. non, a further non-participation in the election because the people are being discouraged from voting. You know, Ambassador Sikri, not, we've been reading really... reports where a large number of Bangladeshi voters are saying there is no point in going to vote because the outcome is well known. Uh, Badiul Alam, if I can ask you, sir, uh, when it comes to the concerns around what the fourth term of uh, Sheikh Hasina may actually bring. In the last few months, we've seen a clampdown on political opponents. Political opponents have been jailed. There have been human rights uh, abuses as well. She has been accused of authoritarianism at time as well. Are there certain worries in the civil society, uh, in the industry, among the people of Bangladesh? Yes, uh, there is uncertainty, as I said, that uh, how uh, it's a one-party rule. Uh, it has been a one-party rule and it will uh, only make it uh, more, uh, put it on farm, farmer foundation. And so uh, we don't know how it will turn out. And as I said, that uh, we've been in an uncertain, uncharted water. And a uh, few things uh, uh, Ambassador Shikri said, uh, I want to respond to. For example, she said that uh, the uh, Supreme Court, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, declared the caretaker system illegal, unconstitutional. That's not that's not quite true. The Supreme Court ruling was that uh, the it is prospectively declared it was prospectively declared unconstitutional after next two elections, and that was defied. And and also uh, there are other reasons why uh, many experts feel that 15th Amendment, which brought back the uh, election under the uh, party in power, is unconstitutional. Uh, so uh, so there are serious issues there. And and also uh, the reality uh, of the India's involvement in Bangladesh election reality is different from the uh, perception. And uh, uh, Ambassador mm. Shikri said that. Uh, it's Bangladesh's internal affairs, but the the general perception is that India is in the thick of it. Uh, India is supporting the ruling party uh, uh, unconditionally and uh, in the interest of continuity, in the interest of stability. So uh, these are the uh, uh, right. reality and uh, un uh, mm. not uh, really consistent with what uh, Ambassador Shikri said. And uh, so uh, the crackdown okay. on the opposition... Mr. Alam? The, uh, space, yeah, for the, for the civil society. We don't know how it right. turns out. I'm going to come back to you in just a bit. Yeah, you're making some important points, but let me get in Ambassador Veena Sikri once again. Ambassador Veena Sikri, very recently, uh, when she was asked about EU and China, Sheikh Hasina said that they will not take sides in this battle. They're a small country of 170 million people. They need investments wherever they come from. Uh, in, uh, in the month of October, she inaugurated an 82-kilometer bridge rail link, which was the largest infrastructure project made with Chinese loans. Bangladesh is also part of the Belt and Road Initiative. So... Will a fourth term for Sheikh Hasina mean closer Bangladesh and China ties? Is this something that we'll have to watch out for closely? Um, well, I think you're talking about the Padda Bridge. I think the government of Bangladesh themselves had said that it was not a Chinese project and it was done uh, with finan internal finances. I know that Chinese built a part of that, maybe the railway part, but not the whole thing. But I would like to uh, point out one thing very clearly, that India is not involved in the election in any way, whatever. I think it has been so, in fact, in the last two or three elections in Bangladesh, India has not been a factor at all. And even in this time, uh, India has not been a factor at all. It's just that two days ago, I think the, one of the BNP leaders uh, said something about India, which was uh, completely uncalled for. So I think we should make it very clear that we are just bystander. This is an internal affair of Bangladesh. This is their election. As elections are held in every country, and there's no point, there's no question of interfering in what the people of Bangladesh may like to decide. You know, the, the Bangladesh uh, Awami League has decided mm. to have candidates, independent candidates, and other candidates. That is their decision. I, I think to say that India is involved in any mm. way, India has very good relations with the government of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Mm. But in every country of the world, we have said that, mm. you know, we will always deal uh, with the government in power, the government who gets elected, because we are we consider Bangladesh a very important neighbor, a very important country. And I think that good relations right. between 
India and Bangladesh are very important for both countries, to so the mutual benefit of both countries. So I think it is very clear that we are not in any way uh, going to uh, either say who we would like to get elected or interfere in any way in the elections. The entire process is an internal one. Let's be very clear on that. And I, I, right. what you say about... Uh, Abadul uh, Alam, my I final question to you. Yeah. No, can I just add a little... Yeah. Uh, Ambassador Zipri, I'm going to come back to you. I'll... I'll yeah, go ahead. yeah I'll, I'll just come back to you, ma'am. My final uh, final questions to both our panelists. Uh, Mr. Alam, I'd like to ask you, irrespective of the outcome of this election, and right now it is a foregone conclusion, uh, how do you think Sheikh Hasina will take the relationship with Bangladesh? Do you think the relationship will continue progressing? Do you see any kind of issues, any unfinished agenda in the relationship with which uh, both countries would have to finish? Well, it will have to be a win-win situation, and uh, so uh, and it is important that we, both of these countries have good relation and and close relationship, and it's it will be good for everybody. And uh, but uh, Bangladesh is a sovereign country, so that will have to be uh, uh, respected. And uh, I hope uh, uh, the whatever outstanding issues are there, for example, sharing of the water and a uh, lot of other issues are there, uh, one-sided trade balance. And these things will, will be resolved uh, after the elections. And uh, it, it will be in the best interest mm -hmm. of uh, everyone. And also, uh, India uh, not right. only will have to have good relationship with the, with the government, but also people-to-people -people relationship is very, very, very important. And that will, mm -hmm. uh, that will cause, uh, sustain, that will make it sustainable. Right. Uh, my final question to Ms. Uh, Ambassador Sikri. Ambassador Sikri, you were talking about the Chinese factor in Bangladesh and future of Bangladesh-China ties. Uh, what would that be if you could sum this up in about a minute for us? Yeah, well, I think that, uh, you know, China has been very active with all India's neighbors. We've seen uh, what uh, the future of economic cooperation has been, say, for example, with Sri Lanka, which has gone into a complete economic tailspin, or with Pakistan, which is on the verge of an economic tailspin. So I think that every country has its own right to decide uh, what the relations would be. And uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, Bangladesh is more than aware of what has happened uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative and with various projects uh, that China has been doing in different countries. China, after all, is not a South Asian country. It is north of the Himalayas. So, you know, I think that is another factor which, which, which makes for a little difference in China's participation. But I would like to end by saying that India has the greatest respect uh, for Bangladesh's sovereignty. Bangladesh's sovereignty is to ensure Bangladesh's sovereignty is something that we have fought for uh, before 1971, during 1971, and at every time after 1971, respect for the sovereignty of Bangladesh has been a prime concern. So we have never at any stage um, you know, given any, uh, even the slightest inkling or interest, because Bangladesh is a very strong, a very big country, and uh, you know people are very dynamic, right. very on Real. And, you know, having mutually good relations is a, is, is, is a win-win situation, which we are trying to work on. Okay. And we All right. people to people one and a half million visas a year for people from Bangladesh to come to India. And this is going to continue. Mm. Mm. Right. Thank you very much, Ambassador Veena Sikri and uh, Mr. Badiul Alam for joining us all the way from Dhaka, giving us your view on the election in Bangladesh and the concerns of the civil society ahead of that election. We're heading into a short break here on Global Eye, but coming up, tensions flare up in West Asia. The U.S. conducted a retaliatory strike in Iraq, killing a pro-Iran military commander. Israel's defense minister has prepared a post-war plan for Gaza. A discussion when we're back.